Today we're going to be taking a look at performance for the AMD Ryzen 5 1600X and we will be comparing it up against my i5 6600K. I felt the i5 was the best comparison to make for this video as they sit within the same price bracket between $200 and $250. In our testing we will look at a good selection of DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 titles as well as the impact of streaming performance on a few of the benchmarks used in our comparison. Since I purchased my i5 6600K, the 7600K has been released by Intel, but I don't currently own one of them, and if you know anything about Skylake and KB Lake, they're virtually identical in terms of IPC performance at the same clock speeds. And since I opted to test both of these CPUs at the same speed, we should have a really good picture of how these two processors stack up to one another in terms of instructions per clock. So to that end, I tested at 3.7 gigahertz on the six core 12 threaded 1600X from AMD, as well as the four core 6600K from Intel. I chose 3.7 gigahertz because that is the speed that the 1600X ran at on all cores out of the box with the reasonably priced MSI B350 Tomahawk at $110. The 1600X does support an XFR boost of 4 gigahertz, but that would only apply during single threaded workloads, which is not applicable in any modern game testing, so I settled at 3.7 gigahertz. The i5 6600K ran out of the box at 3.6 gigahertz on all cores, so I did have to apply a very minor overclock of 100 megahertz to make this an apples to apples comparison, but I did not need to adjust the voltage to achieve this speed on the EVGA Z170 Stinger motherboard. Both of these systems here were running on dual channel 16 gigabyte RAM kits at 3200 megahertz. For the Ryzen 5 system, I used the Guile RAM that was provided by AMD along with the reviewers kit that I did an unboxing and build videos for this past week. And on the Intel system, I utilized G-Scale Trident Z memory once again at 3200 megahertz. Since this is a CPU comparison, I'll only be testing on one GPU in this video, but I will be doing more videos in the coming weeks with various different spins on Ryzen 5 testing to showcase many different scenarios, but today we are only using the MSI RX 480 at stock clock speeds. I did increase the power limit by 50% to ensure the GPU running at its full speed during our benchmark that were done here at 1080p on high settings. I opted to do 1080p high settings based on feedback from the community and also because 1080p high is what the vast majority of game developers actually optimize their titles for. During our testing you will undoubtedly see a GPU bottleneck as it regularly is at 99 to 100% utilization, but this is how most gamers are probably going to play their games. However, for those of you that would like to see benchmarks run side by side at 720p and low settings, I'll have a video posting today with that in information along with the GTX 1080 Ti so as to eliminate any possibility of a GPU bottleneck and I think you'll find those test results to be rather interesting as it put the 1600X far ahead of the 6600K in many benchmarks even though that wasn't the results we'll be seeing here at 1080p on high. But without further ado, let's jump into the numbers and we will start off with DirectX 12 games and their averages as well as the minimum FPS here and we can see that in the five games tested, the i5 6600K took victories in four of those titles. The battle was very close in Sniper Elite 4 and Hitman only having a difference of two and three frames per second respectively and while the 6600K did take more convincing victories in Battlefield 1 and Gears of War 4, the 1600X didn't did end up winning in Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, where I saw excellent core utilization from the AMD processor. Moving into the DX12 minimums, we see a nearly identical picture, although the 1600X did manage to have better minimums here on Gears of War 4 benchmark, in addition to the Ashes of the Singularity Escalation benchmark that it also won on the averages. For DirectX 12, I tested in eight games on that RX 480, and the only games the 1600X managed to edge out a victory was on Mass Effect Andromeda with 64 FPS to the i5's 58 FPS. In all of our other games, the i5 proved to be able to power more frames at 1080p, but in games like Ghost Recon Wildlands, Metro Last Light, and The Witcher 3, the scores are so close that it's really within the margin of error for testing. 
With minimum testing, though, we actually see the 1600X taking wins in a few more games, those being Metro Last Light Redux, Watch Dogs 2, Overwatch, and Mass Effect Andromeda, so that's half the games tested here in DX11. Rainbow Six Siege was also extremely close here, once again within the margin of error, but definitely interesting results with the 1600X taking in more titles on the minimums than it did in the averages where we saw the i5 winning rather consistently. So that wraps up, that wraps up our regular game testing, but the story between these CPUs doesn't end there. If you're considering buying either one of these processors for gaming with the intention of overclocking, then an i5-6600K or more likely the i5-7600K at this point would be the better option for you. I can run my 6600K stable at 4.8 gigahertz in the system I'm using here while the 1600X was not able to overclock at all in the B350 motherboard. I was able to push it up to 4 gigahertz on an X370 board, which gave us minor gains in performance, but it wouldn't be enough to close the gap against an i5 with a significantly higher clock speed. The other thing though to consider here is the price as you could find B350 boards for around $100 and the Z170 Stinger board I was using here for the i5 is around $150. For that you're getting better overclocking and features from the MOBO itself, but you could certainly choose to spend that money on an X370 board to overclock the 1600X, which I would advise most people to do as I find the as I found myself extremely underwhelmed with the MSI B350 Tomahawk in terms of its features and functionality, so if you have any intention really of overclocking, I would look to get an X370 board and maybe stay away from the B350 boards, although I've only tested with the MSI Tomahawk, so, you know, take that for what it is. Now, just gaming on its own is one thing, but what about the impact of streaming performance? I decided to go back after I was done testing here and ran a few of these benchmarks while streaming to Twitch at 1080p, 60 FPS, and a bitrate of 6000 so we could measure the performance impact on the 1600X and the i5-6600K. This was an area that I really expected a 6-core 12-threaded CPU to shine, but despite the 6600K being pushed to 100% while streaming, it ended up pulling in better averages and minimums when compared to the 1600X, although in two of the three games tested, it lost more FPS than the 1600X. In Rainbow Six Siege, the 1600X lost 17 FPS in the averages when streaming going from 162 down to 145, while the 6600K lost 18 FPS but still maintained a higher average of 148 frames per second. That continued in Overwatch with the 1600X losing 21 FPS and the 6600K losing 26 FPS. Lastly, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands that fell by 4 frames per second on Ryzen 5 and 3 FPS in Intel's i5 processor. I'll also go ahead and briefly throw up some minimums during these, during these streaming runs for those of you that want to see them. But that is all I've got for you guys now on the 1600X versus the i5-6600K. I will certainly be looking to you guys in the comments for further testing ideas, so if you have any, feel free to post them in the comments. I will be having more videos on the 1500X in the coming days, as I'm still currently testing that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'll be posting a video later with the GTX 1080 Ti on 720p low settings to see what happens with these two processors when no GPU bottleneck is present and the results there were very intriguing to say the least. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I will leave links down in the description below to where you can purchase the Ryzen 5 processors and other components used here in these systems. So be sure to check those out and I'll catch you guys next time. Ta -ra.